it's Erin with Time Saving Templates and today I'm going to dive into the turnover report template and go over questions that have been coming up when it comes to tracking your turnover. So what you're seeing here is the upgraded version of the turnover template that includes a tenure summary. So you're able to look at turnover percentages based on how long an employee has been with the company. And so I'll go through and fill out the information so you can see some data in here. So I'm going to be going over how to fill out and use this template. You'll see there's a lot of different tabs and pages here at the bottom where um, I'm going to show you how to fill that out. But the end result after you input your information into this template, uh, these charts will auto populate and I've added some sample data here. So you'll be looking at involuntary versus voluntary turnover um, and the turnover percentage per department. So there's up to 20 departments you could list out here. And then we also have in this one a turnover by tenure. Uh, so I'll show you how to set different tenure categories. You can edit and change the, the time frame for each. Uh, so this is going to look again at the turnover percentage over here and then blue is involuntary, orange is voluntary, same here. And then we're also looking at the headcount per tenure, the total hires versus total terminations. The turnover formula includes headcount, so it's total terms divided by the average headcount. So that's why it's important to also consider what the headcount is. If you have really low headcounts in some of these, any termination is going to drive that turnover percentage up. Um, and then we also have a pie chart with the turnover percentage by the tenure categories that you can set. So you may just need to rearrange some of these labels, depending if you have a few that are close together or something. And uh, this one also has termination reason charts. So I've just entered a little bit of sample data. Obviously, you could have a lot more termination reasons for voluntary or involuntary, different charts for each. So it will update with however many termination reasons that you input. So with most of the spreadsheet templates here at Time Saving Templates, the green cells indicate that you need to fill out some information in the green and then the gray cells are formulas. This set tenure ranges because editable. So right now I just have it set for these specific labeled ranges. But I could change this if I wanted instead of one to three years, I want or instead of three to 10 years, I want three to five years, five to 10, et cetera. I'll go ahead and change that later once we get the information in. I'll also link to the original video, which goes over how to use this template in more detail, but those are the main differences with this one. We have a term reasons and some tenure charts. Just to run through it real quick, uh, we also, we have several different tabs that are going to update after you paste your company information in. So beginning headcount, hires, transfers, and then your terminations and ending headcount are all needed in order to calculate your turnover. So this page is looking at your turnover by tenure. And then we also have pages that look at the turnover by department. And I believe that's up to 20 departments. Yeah, there's a spot for 20 departments total. And then the detail summary list out for each department, you could have departments within. So what we have to do to get this information to populate is we're going to need to paste employee information in all of these pages here to the right. Okay, so you'll see that I've pasted some information here into the previous employee list. And I've also pasted some information into the current employee list. The reason it's good to get the uh, be consistent with the dates that you're using for previous and current is that the turnover is calculating based on the average headcount between the headcount as of the previous and as of the current, the average between the two to calculate that turnover percentage of the count of the term terminations. So you'll see at the top, I've added a little note and I even put the date right here so I could track it myself, but just saying it might be easier to look at a calendar if this gets confusing, but 
the previous should be, you know, the beginning, either the beginning of the month or the beginning of the year, depending on if you're doing the monthly turnover or an annual turnover. So you'll see just looking at the two lists, if you look at the higher dates, for this one we're saying it's January. Um, so this is everybody at the company as of January 1st for the previous. And then the current would be January everyone in the company as of January 31st. So terminations are not in the current, you know, active employee list, but you'll see there are several people that were hired January 15th and January 30th. They're here in this current list, but they're not here as of January 1st. So they won't be in this previous list. So that's helping us account for who was hired within the month and in the total headcount within the month. So once I paste in the hire date, you'll see the gray cells to the right are gonna calculate and, and set them in those tenure categories that we had set in the tab in the beginning. And you also see up at the top that we're looking at the tenure as of today. So right now it's March 6th. And if I open up this up tomorrow, it's gonna be March 7th. So it'll continue updating the most recent tenure when you open the file. So if you want to save this as of a certain date, then just uh, you can type over this formula or just paste paste values to get that so that it doesn't keep changing the date. And we're also gonna have to paste in the new hires separately over here. And then we're gonna have to paste in the terminations. For this example, I'm just gonna go with voluntary terms, but you'll see there's a separate tab for involuntary and voluntary so that you can break it out for the different reports a little bit easier. We can put a termination reason. You can use any reasons you want. There's no specific category. And then we also need to include the date of hire and the termination date. And so it's gonna calculate what tenure were they at as of their termination date. So now that we have everything pasted in, if we go to this review tab and click data refresh all, it's going to update based on what I've entered in the employee list. So this is basically just telling me, summarizing the information from the previous list. So the beginning of the month, it was, we had a 20 people headcount and at the current or the end of the month, we have 23 headcount. You'll notice we had some new hires and terms as well. We're listing out the functional areas here and then also functional area and cost centers. So this is so that you can see what, because you may end up having a functional area or a department that you didn't realize is spelled different or something like that. So this helps you see what areas you need to put in your summary. So I would put Northwest, East and South into the overall summary. So once I enter that here, it'll start populating. You'll see the numbers updating in these columns. So you'll see it's starting to update with beginning headcount, hires, we skipped transfers for now. Um, that's explained more in the other video. And then we also have terms. So all five terms, it looks like we're in North. No one else is getting a turnover percentage calculated because of that. But you'll see at the bottom here, we're seeing that we have 20 beginning headcount, 23 ending headcount. So now that you see that I've entered or pasted in all the employee data in these tabs over here, the numbers are populating in the overall summary page. And then in the detailed summary, we could also list out the other categories we had, such as HR, operations. And the idea is if we had wanted to see specific categories within each overall department, but I didn't set it up that way because I only have a few people for the sample data, but you could do that too. I would just put HR dash East and update it in the employee list if you want to break out and see how that looks. So the department here is listed as plant operations, not operations. So I'm showing zero terms. So that's two different departments. So the turnover is occurring in plant operations, not operations. <clears throat> if we go to the tenure summary, 
You'll see it's also populating. This is interesting because, you know, 40% of the turnover is occurring in this three to 10 year category. So 15 of the employees are beginning headcount is in three to 10 years. So what I would recommend for this is actually to break it up into a shorter time. Three to 10 years is a lot of time when you're looking at how long people stay with a company. So I would um, change the label to three to five years here. And then you also need to update it here. So three, update this one to five, and then maybe do five to 10 here, and then 10, even 10 to 15 in 15 to 20. So you update the years or months here, and then you also need to update the label so that it's showing. Okay, after I do that, it's automatically going to update. If you go back to the pay tenure page, it automatically is updating these people to the right category for five to 10 years instead of three to 10 years. It looks like we still have a lot of people in the five to 10 year range. So if I go back to the summary, it looks like we still have 15 people in five to 10 years. Um, so everyone that terminated is five to 10 years. For the example, like if I wanted to, so if I change their data higher to 2017, now they're going into the three to five year. Originally hired in 2017. Now they're falling in the three to five years. And then I also need to find employee number 20 in the previous list and change it here as well. Then that would update it. So that person now appears in the three to five year. That is a really high turnover percent because for the turnover calculation, we're taking you know the total term divided by the average of beginning and ending headcount. So they were the only person in that 10 year range. So the charts will also automatically update. You'll see we have some different termination reasons. And then we're also having a pie chart with some different hires and terms information that you can use for this. So this will just show the different categories and the percentage of turnover percent. So I hope that helps explain how to use this turnover template. And if you want to find this spreadsheet, you can go to timesavingtemplates.com and then go to the shop and then the human resources section. And you should find that turnover template is the, I believe the second one listed. And we also have some free resources. If you go to timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources, we have a human resources compensation metrics cheat sheet that you can download here. And we also have some free getting started with Excel video guides and some other free resources for small businesses and also rental property management. So I hope that helps. And until next time, don't forget that I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using your spreadsheet templates. And watch out for the next video where I'm going to go over another common question that we get with calculating turnover and double checking your turnover headcount numbers. So that will be posting soon in the next week or so.